Coming up on UT10 News, a local program is helping take the chill out of winter for residents. And the city of Perrysburg celebrates a major milestone. Plus reporter Zach Herrig was at the courts for the women's matchup against Youngstown State. Your news in 10 minutes starts now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Angelique Baird. And I'm Courtney Shaw. Toledoans continue to dodge potholes near campus. You bet, Angel. It's like whack-a-mole out there. We sent reporter Gabe Jones out to check on the road conditions. Gabe, what's happening with Toledo's roads? Well, Courtney and Angel, the city currently has no money to pay for them. Toledoans will have a chance to vote on a measure that would allocate money specifically for road repair. Issue 2, which will be on the ballot for March 15th, will provide money for residential street repair by raising the city's income tax. It would generate $8.2 million alone for the remainder of this year. For us to begin to work on our streets and get our streets uh, to begin that process of repaving them and rebuilding them so that we can have you know, less potholes and less problems with people driving up and down the street. City residents will be able to vote on this issue Tuesday, March 15th during the presidential primaries. I'm Gabe Jones reporting live from the UT10 Newsroom. The University of Toledo has received a grant to help victims of sexual assault. Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine awarded the university $214,000 to improve resources on campus. The money will be used to create the Center for Student Advocacy and Wellness. Rocket Hall will be the new home for all of these services. We wanted to be uh, able to bring that all into one location for victims to make it less complicated, to make finding the resources easier, and to pair them with an advocate that can walk them through all of those different steps. The center is expected to be up and running by fall of 2016. Students and faculty with physical disabilities are having difficulty using certain areas across campus. UT is at minimum ADA compliance and currently has 521 handicapped parking spaces. Some spaces are not large enough to assist those in wheelchairs. In addition, many of the bathroom doors on main campus are too heavy to open for people with physical limitations. I really bang in and out, literally bang in and out of those bathrooms because, you know, the doors close so fast and they're so heavy and there's no buttons. If you have any questions regarding the university's accessibility issues, call Anji Hall at the Compliance Office. With more cold weather on the way, some residents may be without heat. Reporter Megan Dietz has information that could help those in need. A local program offers financial aid to Lucas County residents who can't afford their heating bills. The average household of four, making less than $42,000 a year, is eligible. The money is distributed by a federally funded local organization called Pathway. About 15,000 families are helped each year. CEO Cheryl Grice says they exceed their capacity of helping 20 walk-in appointments a day. The unfortunate part about that is that as long as families find themselves living in substandard housing, we're going to face that kind of dilemma. The program pays one bill per year up to $175. It covers utilities including lights, gas, and wood. When individuals are seeking our assistance, don't wait until the last minute. Uh, seek assistance um, ahead of time. Um, be, be proactive. Applications for the Winter Crisis Program will be accepted online until March 31st. I'm Megan Dietz for UT10 News. For 10 straight years, the American Heart Association has recognized UTMC. Reporter Jenna Nance looked into one of the nation's leaders in stroke patient care. Strokes are the fifth leading cause of death in the United States. In 2015, the university treated around 350 stroke patients, which is one of the reasons why UTMC Stroke Program is being honored with Get With The Guidelines Stroke Gold Plus Quality Achievement Award. To get the award, we have to be at 85% for eight different measures, and that's what we've been able to do for 10 consecutive years. Those measures include stroke education and assessing patients for rehabilitation. The goal? to take the patients from diagnosis to discharge within three to four days and ultimately limit permanent damage after a stroke. If you think someone is having a stroke, remember fast, face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty, and it's time to call 911. I'm Jenna Nance for UT10 News. 200 years ago, a small town south of Toledo played a vital role in American history. Reporter Eric Burden explored how Perrysburg Township is celebrating their 200th anniversary. America was still very much at war with the British in 1813 when Ohio native and future president William Henry Harrison ordered the construction of Fort Meigs on the Maumee River. The fort was the largest wooden fortification in North America at the time. Harrison would command his army to victory in two key battles at Fort Meigs, giving momentum back to the Americans in the War of 1812. It is under his command that 
we are in Ohio and we're not in Ontario. Following the war, Congress called for a new town to be settled near the fort, and in 1816, Perrysburg was born and was named after Naval Commander Oliver Hazard Perry. Washington, D.C. is the only other American city plotted by Congress. The town's history shines through in every detail. Its oldest buildings are fitted with plaques showing the year of the foundation's construction. Historical markers and artifacts dot the landscape, and signs proudly displaying history facts and photographs line Louisiana Avenue downtown. Events that are regularly held in Perrysburg include seasonal festivals, historical reenactments, parades, and farmers markets. The challenge becomes it, keeping that uniqueness and that quaintness, if you will, still a part of Perrysburg life. A bicentennial committee was formed out of a cross-section of the community to plan special events for the town's birthday, which is officially on April 27th. It all culminates in massive parades and fireworks celebrations on the 4th of July weekend. Wishing Perrysburg Township a happy 200th birthday and continued success over the next 200 years, I'm Eric Burden for UT10 News. I'm Zach Herrig, and this is your UT10 Sports Report. The Rocket men and women's basketball teams were on the road this weekend while the football team welcomed in the 2016 recruiting class. But first, we start with the Rocket women's tennis team as they were in action against Youngstown State on Saturday. UT came in looking for their second win of the young season. The Rocket doubles would come out firing as senior Lauren Ty and Claire Alec team up for the point. Then watch here as UT senior Emily Mazzola puts the powerful lefty slam past the Penguins. However, Youngstown State would respond as the Rockets are unable to return a backhand from the Penguins. UT would then regain control as sophomore Sydney Huck returns a serve with a forehand, leading to a 4-3 Toledo victory. Rocket head coach Tracy Montler says her seniors will be a key to success. I've never had a successful team that hasn't had good leaders, so that's the most, it's the most important part of a good team, and we're lucky that we have three of them that have a lot of experience. Their next match will be on the road at Cincinnati on February 19th. Football season may be several months away, but the 2016 Toledo Football National Signing Day brought excitement back to Rocket Nation. Fans and alumni all gathered in Savage Arena on Wednesday to hear about the 22 new recruits coming from all over the country. This year's class ranks third in the Mid-American Conference, according to Rivals and 247 Sports. Rankings and, and where the class ranks and all that, I, I, I'm not really big on that. I'm not into that. I'm more into seeing where these guys develop and where they are in three or four years or five years in some cases. UT's top picks include bringing in seven signees from Florida, such as wide receivers Calvin Jackson Jr. and Naru and Shaka, who are both three-star recruits. Then there's Johnny Williams, a defensive end transfer from Notre Dame, who could have an immediate impact in 2016. Yeah, Johnny's a big physical presence. He's a guy who's a, you know, he can, he's a threat in a, in a run game to, to hold his gap and, and be a good run-stopping player. And then obviously, you know, the highlight of all that is he's a tremendous pass rusher too. Your first chance to get a look at the 2016 Rockets will be at the April 9th spring game in the Glass Bowl. And the new recruits will be joining this team in the fall. And guys, a quick update on the basketball teams. They were on the road at Kent State this weekend and swept the Golden Flashes. The guys won 82-67, uh, to 67, while the girls won 67-64. Thanks, Zach. That's great for the university. Well, that's it for UT10 News. For the latest breaking news from campus and bios from all UT10 reporters, go to our website, ut10news.com. And remember, you can watch the live stream of our newscast production every Tuesday morning at 1030 on our YouTube channel. For Courtney Shaw, Zach Herrig, and all of our crew, I'm Angelique Baird. Have a great week and stay tuned for more news from the UT campus.